Hi guys, in this video I'll take a look at two safety products. That's the Spinlock Lumion and the Rescue Me PLB1. They're completely different products with each their purpose, but they're both pretty awesome and they're both safety related. The Lumion will make you more visible in the water to anybody close by, while the Rescue Me PLB1 will notify Search and Rescue that you're in need of assistance even though you're thousands of miles offshore. So, let's start by taking a closer look at the PLB1. I'm sure the vast majority of you guys know what a PLB is, but just to sum it up very quickly for anybody who doesn't, PLB is short for Personal Locator Beacon, and that's a very apt description of what this thing does. So in very broad strokes, if asked to activate this device, it would first get a GPS fix and it would then send that position back home to search and rescue via satellite. But uh, let's take a closer look at what's inside this box. Inside the box there's the PLB-1 itself. And uh, the pictures I saw of this online made it look kind of cheap or flimsily built, but that's definitely not the case. This feels rock solid and it's, it inspires a lot of confidence, and that's certainly a good thing when you're talking about a safety product. I like the fact that this has got a very, very small form factor, and um, yeah, we'll get to back to why in the, in the end of this video. So also included in the box was this clip for mounting the PLB, and there's a sort of flotation pouch for it, a small lanyard, I guess, and some kind of certificate and a user manual. When talking about notifying search and rescue from far offshore, there are two kinds of products that behave very similar but have some distinct differences. Those of you who recognize the PLB will probably also recognize the yellow device behind me. That's an EPIRB. A PLB and an EPIRB are similar in the fact that they in this case use the exact same technology to notify someone that you're in desperate need of assistance. There are some differences though, the obvious one being size. The PLB in this case is so small that you can carry it on your person. That's not really the case with this EPIRB. Then there's battery life. This PLB is only required to operate for 24 hours, whereas the EPIRB is required to operate for 48 hours. Then there's the fact that EPIRBs are required to float, I believe, and that's not the case for PLBs. Then there's the most important difference, and that's who gets notified when you activate a PLB versus an EPIRB. There's a lot of conflicting information out there, and I haven't been able to get to the bottom of it yet, but here's what I have found out. Oh, and I certainly hope that the mic didn't pick up too much of Yukul's snoring. But uh, let's get back to the topic at hand. So we're talking about the differences between PLBs and EPIRBs. So let's use me as an example and let's take a closer look at this EPIRB. This is the EPIRB I've got here aboard Obelix and of course this has been programmed with Obelix's MMSI number and that's Marine Mobile Service Identity. That's a globally unique number that's used to identify this particular vessel. The first three digits in the MMSI number indicates the vessel's country of origin. In my case it's 219 because that's Denmark. So if you set off an EPIRB, those first three digits in the MMSI number are used to route the alert to the vessel's country of origin, and that's no matter where on the planet you activate this. So that means if I activate this, the JRCC here in Denmark would be notified and it would be up to them to take the first steps in coordinating a rescue. On the other hand, who gets notified if I activate my PLB is going to be completely dependent on my current location. There's a bit of conflicting information out there as to whether or not the country where this was initially registered in also gets notified, but I haven't been able to find a conclusive answer to that question. So take my trip across the Atlantic for instance. Depending where on the route I activate my PLB, I might be depending on Portugal, Spain, Senegal, France, or yeah, any other countries whose search and rescue zone we're in to coordinate my rescue. And take Portugal for instance. Their search and rescue zone is huge, yet they're not listed on Coastpass Sarsat's website with national beacon regulations. So what happens if you set off a PLB inside that search and rescue zone? I don't know, to be honest, and that uncertainty is not something I want to have associated with a piece of safety equipment. It might seem a little bit silly, but uh, for a piece of safety equipment like this PLB, I want to be absolutely sure I know what goes on in the event that I should ever activate this. 
So that's why this PLB has been programmed with an MMSI number, essentially turning it in to an EPIRB. And of course, that won't make this PLB fulfill all the hardware requirements for a PLB I mentioned a little earlier on, so this guy still won't float and he won't operate as long as a real EPIRB either and so on, but by programming this with an MMSI number rather than the standard serial number of a PLB, I know exactly who gets notified in the event that I should ever activate this. And I have complete confidence in the fact that the JRCC here in Denmark will do an awesome job of coordinating a rescue. If I was only going to be using my PLB for coastal cruising in a country where I knew for a fact that PLBs were well supported, I wouldn't have gone through the trouble of having it programmed with an MMSI number. Sure, there are some manufacturers out there that claim that their PLBs are supported worldwide, including the uh, manufacturer of the Rescue Me PLB1, but supported how and how well, and that is basically the question I haven't been able to find an answer to. Now, all PLBs and EPIRBs use the exact same technology as a backbone, and that's caused by SASAT. I think I mentioned their name a little earlier on in the video too, and that I trust absolutely. But I want to be sure that who gets notified if I should ever want to activate this little guy have well-proven, well-rehearsed procedures in place to coordinate my rescue. And that makes sense, right? I'm not just being paranoid here, am I? You might be wondering why I'd go through the trouble with this little PLB when I seem to think that the well-proven procedures that back the EPIRBs are much superior. Some claim that size isn't everything, but in this very particular case, size is very important. Because of the small form factor of this PLB, I'm able to secure it to my DeckVest 5D, and that means whenever I go up on deck, I'll be bringing this PLB with me, and I really like that idea. So what I want to do here is very simple. Basically, I just want to store my PLB inside of my PFD. So, something like that. Of course, that isn't the best idea because my PLB doesn't float. So, if I was able to activate my PFD, this would sink. So I'm just going to use a bit of the included line to secure the PLB to the PFD. I've secured the PLB with the included line. Now, before opening up the vest, I thought I'd want to secure the PLB with this bracket here, but I actually think the line is a much better idea. I've used a bit of tape here to coil up the line to keep it out of the way. Now, in the event I ever go overboard, all I need to do is to pull out the antenna here on the PLB, like this, then flip this little latch and push this button. Now that we've got my Spinlock DeckVest 5D out on the table, let's move on to the next product, and that's the Lumion from Spinlock. There's not really a lot to this product. It's awesomely clever, and it's not all that expensive either. I think I paid the equivalent of $20 US for this packet of two lights. So let's open it up and take a closer look. These are two tiny water-activated LED lights, and these are adhered to the bladder of your inflatable PFD. And when these light up, the light is then diffused by the bladder, and that's going to make you a lot more visible in the water. I think that is an awesomely clever solution. I just so happen to have a Spinlock PFD, but I think these will work with almost any inflatable PFD. I've opened up my PFD, and now is an excellent opportunity just to check that everything looks okay. But, uh, let's go ahead and flip this over and mount these. Oh, and I forgot to mention that it's probably a good idea to test these before actually adhering them to your PFD. So that seems to be working. There we go. In the hopes of being able to show you guys the effect of these lights, I've put on my PFD and I'm gonna inflate it manually because this cartridge doesn't need to be replaced yet. Okay, that's about it, I think. 
So uh, let's see if I can locate the uh, contacts of uh, those lights. Uh, there, I think so. Just... Okay, I think you guys are able to see. Okay, I think you guys are able to see that. So uh, let me just turn off some of the lights so we can get a better idea of how this looks. I've activated both lights now, and I think these lights are going to make me a lot more visible in the water. Both the Rescue Me PLB1 and the Spinlock Lumion get big thumbs up from here. Oh, Jesus, it's hot in here. Ugh. Okay guys, that's gonna be it for this video. See you! Yukul and I hope you've enjoyed this video. For more videos like it, click subscribe. Please consider leaving a comment and a thumbs up. It really helps me a lot and I appreciate your support very much. If you're new to the channel, please check out the introduction playlist. If you want to watch every single video I've ever published, check out the playlist named All Videos. It contains every single video listed in chronological order.